a Red Lipstick Club production. Welcome, lovers and friends, to the Red Lipstick Club. I'm your host, Anna Sierra. And of course, you can catch me every Friday, either by myself or with an amazing guest to talk about anything from love, sex, relationships, life, all from an amazingly grown ass perspective. I want to do a little housekeeping and let you guys know to go ahead and follow me on social media. You can find me on Instagram at official red lip club. If you're tuning in now and watching me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. You can go ahead and turn on your notifications so you'll know when our next podcast will drop. I'm excited to start doing some more recorded versions so you can actually see my expressions. And if you have the opportunity to sit down and actually watch a YouTube of the podcast, that's amazing. But if not, you guys can actually subscribe to the Red Lipstick Club on all of your podcast platforms, whether that is Apple, Google, Amazon, also on Spotify. So this is only my second episode. I'm excited to to be back. Last week's episode... Oh man, I spent some some time and some and allowed myself to be vulnerable and talk more about dating over 30 and how that has impacted my life, not getting married sooner, not having children sooner, the fear that comes with that, and the hope, the hope, <laughs> you guys, that I will that I will find that person. And um, at some point it will be my time and my opportunity. And that's exciting to think that, you know, that those things are possible still for me. And if you were somebody that took the time to listen to my podcast last week, I thank you so much. Hopefully you left a comment for me or gave me some feedback about how that conversation impacted you. I also would love to hear back from you about some other topics that you want to cover. I have a list. I'm so excited about this podcast. I've been wanting to do it for quite a while and... I've seen so many uh, podcasts and and YouTube channels from men and from a men's perspective um, on dating and life and love and relationships. And some of them are really young. Some of them are older, but some of them are also really young. And I'm thinking to myself, you haven't, you have not experienced anything yet. (laughs) Like, Like you have not. And I'm even thinking about men my age that are dating, you know, dating women that are in that crunch period of their lives where they're like, I want kids right now and not really having that lead way. So, you know, just hopefully providing a space, a safe space, not just for men, but for women, for women, but for men as well. I I really want a a place where you can have a great dialogue. And I'm hoping that some of you really connect in the comments section, whether it's in the podcast or on my YouTube channel and really having those discussions that I think are necessary especially, you know, me being a black woman, but just a woman in general, you know, trying to find their way in this world and, and trying to be happy while doing it. So all week, I've been trying to keep, you know, my engagement going. And I've been doing so by posting different questions surrounding the topic of sex. And it's interesting, some of the responses I'm getting in some of the kind of side eyes that the guys are saying, like, oh, So you're going to bring that topic up. Yes, I am. (laughs) I'm going to ask the questions. I'm going to see what the people are saying. I want to know how you feel. One of the questions that I posed is, have you had a a bad sexual experience with a partner? And and how did you, what did you do? What did you say about it? Did you bring it up? And it's funny because I had quite a few guys say, I just broke it off. Like they didn't even have the conversation with that partner. They just broke off the situation. So I'm going to talk about that and maybe another way that we can go about that besides maybe just breaking it off with somebody. There are ways that we can go about that conversation. Next question I asked everybody was, does size matter? (laughs) The elusive does size matter question. I'm going to, I looked up some research guys, you know, I'm a girl by her numbers. You know, I love my sports too. So I got to have some numbers to back up what I'm talking about. But I found it to be interesting, some of the stats that I got back regarding that. I think you'll be interested, so stay tuned for Does Size Really Matter? And I also asked, is there ever been a point where somebody has tried something sexually with you that you were just totally not into? And how did you handle 
that situation. I think a lot of people sometimes just go along with things instead of really saying whether or not it is something that's working for them. And finally, I asked you guys, what's most important to you in a sexual connection? Is it the physical or the emotional? And you'd be surprised some of the responses that I got back both from men and women. So I'm excited to talk about my journey through asking you guys questions throughout the week. So thank you so much for participating and being engaged in what I'm doing. Thank you for following me. I'm so excited about it. And I'm looking forward to having a few guests coming up soon for some of my upcoming shows, especially my I Met in the DM and now in a relationship conversation. We are obviously an internet age where a lot of our connections are coming through that way and they are bold, but they're exciting. So I'm excited to actually speak with and have some guests talk about their experience with that. Long story short though, guys, I want to talk about what do you do and how do you approach a conversation with a partner when it is not good, when the sex is not good, it's not working. So I looked up an article Um, It's from Insider Mag, and I loved it because the article really gave some clear, concrete ways that you can approach these conversations. And I think it's so important, and I don't know about the rest of you, but for myself personally, I have had to have these conversations with a few partners, and it's never an easy conversation to have. It's really difficult to kind of figure out how you're going to start that interaction, You don't want to offend the other person, but at the same time, you know, it's very necessary and you know that you've probably reached a point in your relationship where if we don't have this conversation, it's going to end bad. It's not, it's not going to end in any way, possibly a positive way. And I have had situations where I have spoken to a partner and they actually had a very positive reaction and we had a really great, phenomenal dialogue, which I greatly appreciated. And then there've been times where I have said my concerns and my issues, and it was either reciprocated with uh, personal insecurities or also also, um, some aggression and, uh, and trying to deflect blame on why things weren't working. And at the end of the day, I'm not saying that, that the woman being pleasured is the only goal and focus, but at the same time, Because women a lot of times are so emotionally connected, nine times out of 10, if she is feeling satisfied, she's going to make more of an effort to satisfy you. And a lot of that comes from like an emotional connection, but also it does come from the physical and it's knowing the body of your partner and knowing how your partner really climaxes. There are some studies that were showing that most women do not climax off penetration they don't. So I'll be able to discuss more about that when I talk about this size matter, because that's something that I don't think most people know. And I, I don't know if most women know about their, their own bodies to that degree. And I think it all really comes back to, you know, think about growing up and having the birds and the bees conversation (laughs) with your parents. I don't recall at any point that conversation, including what you need to do or what you need to ask for to make sure that you climax, to make sure that you are sexually satisfied. I don't ever recall that conversation with either of my parents. Were they trying to prevent me from bringing home a baby? Absolutely. Were they trying to tell me about sexual health and making sure that I knew about protection and all those things and, and, and knowing that I could say no if I wanted to? Absolutely. But were there conversations about, is this person actually pleasing you? What you need, what type of conversations you need to have with a man in order for him to really understand sexually what you need. And I think it's foolish of us to assume going into a situation with, with somebody that they should automatically know what to do, especially with men. Like you're just assuming that he he knows When in fact, he could have been going through his entire life and nobody's told him that what he was doing wasn't working. Did you think about that? Like how many men have probably went through life where the woman faked it for years 
and he he really thinks he's doing something because nobody told him he wasn't. It happens. It happens more often than you think. And you would be doing your partner a disservice, whether you stay together or not, to let them know what is working and what is not working and how maybe you guys can work together to, to make it better. So I, I think it's important. I do like some of the tips they gave. And one of the tips I loved is that you, you're you planning out your conversation. So you're not going into these conversations blindly because a lot of times that can be emotionally driven. And then also it'll sometimes turn into you throwing personal shots at the person as opposed to you having a specific plan of action to make it the best situation that it can be. And I, anytime I've dealt with men, a lot of them work really well when you give, when you give them specific instructions, um, very detailed, specific instructions, as opposed to just some overarching idea of what you want or what you need. Then you're leaving it up to them to decide what's going to work or what's not. Be clear with your intentions and what you need. And I think you might get a better response. My second thing that I love that I sh- that I was looking at when it comes to having this conversation about sex with a partner is that t- is to temper your expectations and to anticipate that this person may have one, one of a few different reactions to this conversation. You could get somebody that's very receptive and is, is happy and, and, it, and they're happy that you came to them with this and they're positive about it and they want to have that conversation and that dialogue. But you also might get somebody that is taking real offense to it and some of them can be aggressive or, you know, a little bit demeaning about it because they're feeling personally attacked and you need to know, not necessarily know, but just anticipate different reactions to it and have a response ready for whatever comes your way that may not be so emotionally driven. And I think you, either way it goes, you'll have a better reaction because you were anticipating that this could go either way. It could go, you know, either way. And I want to give one fun tidbit of information that I don't know if you've tried, but if you're in this position and you're really struggling with your partner about what works or not, Try a game where each of you gets to give three things that they would love to do sexually that either they maybe have never tried or tried with each other or just really in general loved and and they haven't done with each other. Just three different things that you would like to do and make the rule that it's a judgment free zone when you do it. And that's so important because I think especially for men being able to be sexually open and fluid. That's not always a space, a safe space that that women provide for men. And I think it's really important to not judge the man that you're with based off what might personally stimulate him. I mean, if you don't know for most men, their prostate is the most sensitive part in their body. And if you do the Google math on that, you know where that's located. And if you're not providing a safe space for that man to say that that's something that he might want to entertain, then you're not really doing him a good service as well. And if it's something you're not into, that's it doesn't that's fine. But at least give a person a safe space to say what it is they need and what they want. And if you do that, I'm 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 sure that you'll probably have a better a better situation when it comes to your sex relationship with your partner. That's just for me to you. I don't know. You have to let me know. Write in the comments below if you plan on trying any of these tips or if you've tried anything specifically that you have done that has really helped your personal sexual relationship with your partner. Give us the deets on that. Write in the comments. Let us know so we can spread the wealth of information for sure. Next thing though I want to talk about is size, you guys. Okay. I got so many different responses to this. I got some guys that were like, <laughs> girl, like, okay, you're going to come at our necks like that. Yes, I am. I'm doing it. Um, and I actually had some brave women that responded to me as well. And were like, you know, if I'm being honest, for me, it does matter. And I don't judge on any end. And I think it all really comes down to how a woman experiences pleasure and what is needed for her to climax. It's interesting, but most women are not penetration stimulated for climax, meaning most women are more clit stimulated. So 
no matter the size of your of your your penis it doesn't necessarily mean that you would be able to make the woman in your life climax which I don't know if people even think to ask that I don't even know if there's women out there that have even thought about maybe that's why I've maybe never had an orgasm it could be because you're clit stimulated and not penetration stimulated but if you are a woman that is penetration stimulated yes size does typically matter for those women and they typically need a longer penis in order to reach climax and also to hopefully hit the g-spot then so it, it matters but it doesn't at the end of the day the emotional connection you know what these studies have found is even bigger than anything size can do i know for myself personally if you are not necessarily fully equipped in that area it's not a deal breaker but you need to be skilled in other ways and you know what I'm talking about. If you're not skilled, if you don't have a desire to do those things, odds are you will not be able to do much for me. And go from there. And and scene on that. <laughs> but it's interesting, you guys. The average penis size is five inches. Like just a little over five. Like five point like one six inches. That's the average size. So if you're a guy out there thinking, oh my God, like do, do they think I'm small? Well, if you're if you're five inches, you're average. You're the average man. So next time you have a woman come to you crazy and say, I need 10 inches. You could just go ahead and check her and say, boo boo. Most men are, are five. So the odds of you meeting that are pretty slim to none. And you don't need, need all that anyway. I'm, I'm equipped in other areas. See how I spent that around? Like I just helped you out right there. So yeah, that's, that's how I feel about size. You know, it, it is a, it can be a sensitive topic. Some men can be really sensitive about it. And uh, but it is something to think about. And it is good to have the facts about it. So that way you are not, I guess, putting unrealistic expectations on yourself and others when it comes to that. So, you know, something to kind of think about. I also wanted to talk about which I which I posed the question to you guys was, has there been a situation where somebody has tried something sexually on you that you were just not down with. It did nothing for you. You were not happy about it and you kind of just went along with it. And after the fact, you're like, why did I go along with that? I'm not trying to be too graphic, but I will say this. I really wish that men would stop trying to sneak anal on women as if that is something casual to do. And if you're watching me on YouTube, you're seeing me do the blink, blink stare on that moment, because that's how I feel about that. It is something that is invasive at times. It's very specific. You need to be, your body needs to be prepared for that. I am a woman that has many gay male friends and I know men that, you know, have let me know what it takes to prepare your body for, for anal. It's not something you just want to casually slip in. It's, it's not like that. You know, not having the proper lubrication, not not making sure that you're, the woman that you're with, her body is right. And stop using it as like a dangle in front of a woman's face saying, this is what I, I need to do or what I have to do. It is It can be extremely overwhelming. That for me is just something that is very overwhelming, over played out for me and and just no. And I wish people would stop just trying that out or like even getting in the area and thinking that that's something casually to do. It's it's not casual. So I don't know if it's not too crazy, y'all. Write in the comments to me what your what something's been trying to do that you were like I don't think so. Uh, homie, don't play that. Please don't. Don't ever try that again with me. I'm curious as to some things. I'm a pretty open woman and liberated and things of that nature. But that for me is just like a no, no for I'm just going to whip this out and try that. So tell me what you think about that one. I'm curious. <laughs> I want to know how you guys feel about that. With that being said, though, you guys, um, Sex is, is an important part of your relationships and it can be, you know, a, a deal breaker. It can be a deal breaker for some people and it can ultimately end relationships if it's, if it's not right, if it's maybe not frequent enough. Um, it, it is, it is a conversation that 
probably will constantly need to be had. And I even think about my friends that have had children and, and balancing their sex life while having children as well. Like, how do you do, how do you do that? You know, how do you, how do you keep that flame going and that excitement going and, you know, pleasing each other in that way? I mean, there's so much that goes into that and it is such an important part of a relationship. You know, I, it's not something that you can just kind of leave, leave by the wayside and not tackle and approach and take care of. So I'm curious for you moms out there um, and your husbands out there, your dads out there, how you guys are balancing that with your partner and and leaving space for that and leaving space for fun and uh, spontaneity. Um, Or are you like, girl, we get in where we fit in. If that's you, cheers. I don't know. I'm curious to know how you're how you are making that work, what you're, what you're doing to, to make that work with each other. I do want to pose a fun question and maybe I'll do a poll or something, uh, just to kind of see what your responses are. But I want to know if you think in group settings, do men or women talk more about sex? Before I go on right in the comments below, what you who which group do you think talks more about sex when they're in in a group setting is it men or is it women i don't know i'm curious what you think i'll tell you this for myself recently as i've gotten older i have found that my girlfriends are a lot more free to talk about it and they have so much more to say and they they want to experience more they want to try new things they they don't feel so trapped with society norms of what they think a a relationship and a sexual relationship should look like. And it was interesting. I've, I've, I've sat down with some friends recently, some girlfriends, and some of them were very much, you know, in a box when it came to sex. And then as they've been, you know, living their lives and some of them been single for a while and, and kind of experimenting and feeling out life and what they want and what they really need. I found it crazy how many of them were inter- entertaining threesomes or a, a swinger type situation, like public sessions or just things of that nature. And I'm like, wow, these are these are people I would never think, never think that this would be something that they would be interested in and wanting to do. And what I found with a lot of them is they've told me as they've gotten older, they really just, pardon my French, but really don't give a fuck. And... I feel myself leaning that way as well, where what works for me works for me and what works for me and my partner works for us. And I I don't need to explain what I'm doing to anybody else but the person that I'm involved with. I owe nobody else any explanation as to why these things are working. And having somebody tell me that I can't try something because it's society tells me that I should not try it, it's not really for me. And I'm a Sagittarius, so we're we are kind of the try people, where we're, we'll we'll try pretty much anything once, and if we don't like it, we just don't like it. But we'll at least attempt it. So I'm curious, as you've gotten older, people, if you're on here, and as you've gotten older, do you feel more liberated? Like, do you feel like you can try more things? That you feel like you have the space to do just a little bit more exploring than you've done before? So. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what the comments are. We'll continue to have these discussions, you know, continue to engage yourself with me because I think these are so important. And I think it's great to have a platform like this to be able to talk about it safely on. Um, and it doesn't matter who you are. I'm curious and I'm excited to hear what you have to say about it. So I want to thank you all. You guys, thank you so much for, for joining me on this new episode of the Red Lipstick Club. It has been so much fun so far. I'm going to continue to do it. I'm excited for next week's episode. Next week's episode is going to be surrounding people that met within the DM. So someone jumped in your DM and from there you dated and, you know, we're in a full-blown relationship. And I'm curious to know how that, how that's worked for people and what was the difference for them? We, we live obviously in an internet society where how we interact and meet people is completely different for a lot of us. And when you think about how the recent pandemic has impacted people, um, I don't have to kind of scramble that for YouTube because you really can't talk about it, but uh, uh, what what our world has recently (laughs) been impacted by, 
you know, we have really adjusted how we communicate and how those first interactions are happening. And a lot of them are happening online in the DM. So I'm excited to talk about that next week. If you have any questions for me or comments about that, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Until then, guys, please make sure you subscribe, uh, like, share, comment. Like I said, you can watch me on YouTube or on multiple podcast streaming platforms. But until next time, you guys stay loved, stay blessed.